Now, if you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking two questions. One, I'm looking for a new laptop. And number two, can I get a laptop that's nearly three years old? And the answer to that question is you absolutely can, and you're probably better off if you do. But for a more detailed answer to this question, let's take a look at Apple's marketing techniques and why they trick you into believing that you need the newest product every single year. Now, every year, like clockwork, Apple puts on multiple presentations about new products that are coming up and they demonstrate how the newest products are so much better than the previous generations. While their techniques and demonstrations are so carefully catered and the words are so carefully crafted to convince the audience that they need the newest product, the changes are usually only incremental and you usually don't need to upgrade every single year for every new iteration, whether it be for an iPhone, a Mac, or an Apple Watch. So the MacBook Air M1 is technically nearly three years old and it's actually two generations behind the current M2 processor. Now, while those numbers might seem pretty drastic, to understand how much technology has advanced, we need to take a look at the growth of technology. So the growth in semiconductors and the advancements and compare them to what the demand is from programs and softwares that utilize this hardware. And what you'll notice is that the growth in technology far exceeds what the demand in these new programs are. So while yes, the new technology is much better, it is faster, you don't necessarily need the newest technology to do your everyday and probably more complicated tasks like video editing and computer aided design. I actually put up these two graphs here to show you the demonstration and why you shouldn't be fooled and sucked into these comparisons that most of these companies make to trick you or convince you into buying the newest product every single year. Also guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you're interested in more MacBook and Apple related content. Now let's get back to the question at hand. How good is the M1 MacBook Air and is it still worth buying in 2023? And I actually made a video review on the MacBook Air. It's very detailed and you actually can find it right here. And it goes over all the nitty gritty and the comparisons and the benchmark scores. But at the end of the day, the M1 processor is a phenomenal, a phenomenal piece of equipment and a phenomenal piece of silicone that Apple developed. And actually it goes toe to toe with my desktop computer that's running an AMD Ryzen 7 processing chip. There are certain programs like video editing that I can actually accomplish faster on my MacBook than I can on my desktop, just because how Apple has integrated their M1 silicone processor with all other hardware that's built in-house. Now, speaking of software, at the very early stages when the MacBooks came up with the M processor line, there are a lot of questions and concerns whether or not the new programs and softwares will be able to take advantage of the new chip and how smooth the programs will be able to transition into a new silicone chip like the M1, as opposed to what Intel made in previous generations. And now three years after that Apple has released the M line, pretty much every software that's developed now is made specifically for the M processor. So there's an Intel version, uh, AMD version, and then there's the M version that will work on your M1. So programs like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, um, After Effects, all of these programs are now designed to work flawlessly with the new M line and they work perfectly with the M1. Now we've spoken about the M1 processor and how it compares to the M2 and the newer iterations and the newer generation of CPUs, but I wanna talk about Apple's titling and the nomenclature. So when they release a new product, they usually attach a number to it, so like, the MacBook and the processors, you have an M1 and then it goes sequentially to M2. Likewise with the iPhones, it starts off with the iPhone and it goes to 2, 3, all the way up to 14 as we have now. And what that perceives is, or what the perception is for the people who are looking at these products is that the higher the number, the better the product. But in terms of a MacBook, you have to look at the bigger picture. And a computer is a very sophisticated piece of hardware and it requires a lot of different pieces and functions to function properly and to run properly. And one of the things that Apple doesn't really go over in detail is RAM. And if anyone knows anything about computers, RAM or random access memory is critical for the performance of any laptop, whether it's a Windows computer, Linux, or Mac. Now, all MacBooks, whether it's M1 or M2, come with a base eight gigabytes of RAM, and eight gigabytes in 2023 is almost too little. Yes, the processors are very good and they can probably handle tasks that utilize a lot of RAM, but you're putting too much pressure and too much constraint on the processor. Nowadays, 16 gigabytes RAM is almost a standard and is recommended for any user, whether it's just productivity or high-end and heavy-end users like video editors and photo editors and photo design. Now, my MacBook is an M1, but with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I can actually make the argument that an M1 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM will run better over a longer period of time with an M2 with only eight gigabytes of RAM. 
So make sure that when you're doing your research on what kind of laptop you're looking at, that you look at the full spec and you don't get caught up in the titles. And that's how these guys and how these companies really get you. So my recommendation is take a look at what MacBook or what laptop you're looking at and make sure that all specifications, including the hard drive and the RAM, meet your requirements. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at the pricing for the MacBooks, a MacBook Air M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM actually costs the same amount as an M2 MacBook with just eight gigabytes of RAM. And if you use the Apple educational discount, which I recommend everyone use because Apple doesn't verify whether you're not in school, the price actually goes down to $1,079 USD. So you're actually getting a very good deal on a very powerful machine for a very competitive price. Now let's go over some of the features and the specifications of the MacBook Air M1 and we'll start off with the display. Display is a 13.3 inch, very crisp LCD display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And this resolution is actually higher than most standard laptops these days. A lot of Windows laptops only come with 1920 by 1080 and you'll be paying a very hefty premium if you wanna go 4K. I'll say that videos, pictures look absolutely phenomenal with this resolution and you don't have to worry about looking at any pixels. Your eyes definitely can't differentiate at that resolution. Now the 13.3 inch display will accomplish any task you're looking to do on the MacBook, whether it's video editing or just standard productivity. I have no issues with the screen size. And with 400 nits of brightness, you can actually work on this laptop outside with the sun glaring. You don't have to worry about the screen dimming. You'll see all the colors accurately, no matter what uh, lighting conditions you're in. Now, one of the main things people look at when purchasing a new laptop is battery life. And the battery life on the M1 is absolutely phenomenal. It's rated at 18 hours, but with actual real world experience, I've gotten anywhere from 12 to 14 hours with medium to heavy duty tasks. So there are certain days where I don't have to charge my laptop for two days. And if I leave the home without the power brick, I don't have to worry about my MacBook running out of juice. I'm comfortable and I know that I can get through the rest of the day without any issues at all. And one of the really good things about the battery in the MacBook Air is that whether or not it is plugged into a wall or not, your CPU is gonna get the same performance. So unlike Windows computers where performance is throttled when the power brick is, uh, is detached, with the MacBook, you're gonna get the exact same performance whether or not you have it plugged into the wall or just using it on the go. And looking at the standard physical characteristics of the MacBook, it comes with two ports. So that's a USB 4 slash Thunderbolt on the left side and a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right side. Now the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is great news for audiophiles that like listening to lossless audio with a wired connection. So you don't have to worry about a Bluetooth connection and losing some of that audio quality. Now the two ports are standard across all MacBook lines. And if you ever do run out of ports, you can always use a port extender like this one here. You can buy off Amazon for a very cheap price of just 20 bucks, but I usually never run into that issue. Now I also wanna go over some reasons why you probably do not want to upgrade to the newest MacBook Air M2. And the first reason is throttling issues. For those of you who don't know, throttling refers to the CPU slowing down in order to account for overheating and overheating the MacBook Air M2 does a lot. Now, some may say that this is because of the eight core CPU, the base uh, M2 processor, and others may refer to the thermal schematics and how it's laid out, but it's simply not as good as the M1. Now, I've owned the M1 for almost two years and I've never issued any throttling problems at all. My MacBook has never overheated once. Now, another major issue with the M2 is just the SSD speeds. And some programs, they found that the MacBook Air M2 SSD speeds are almost 50% of what the M1s are at. And more importantly, the write speeds are significantly slower than the M1s. So if you're doing a lot of editing and a lot of exports on your MacBook, just know that the speeds on the M2 will be slower than the M1. And there's currently no fix for this as this is a hardware issue. Now, if you are interested in going with the MacBook Air M1, I'll share the specifications on how I have configured my laptop I have the M1 Air with a 512 gigabyte SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, my recommendation to you is to probably skip out on upgrading the SSD, stick to 256 gigabytes, and if you do need the extra space, just buy an external SSD, as it will be a lot cheaper than upgrading with Apple. Now, I highly, highly recommend that you do upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM. That upgrade from eight gigabytes will ensure that your laptop will be good for at least four to five years, and you won't have to worry about upgrading in the near future. And that's it for the video today, guys. So I really do recommend that the MacBook Air M1 is a very exceptional laptop, even in 2023. And if you are looking for a new laptop, definitely consider buying this one. And if you like this content and you want more Apple related content in the future, hit that subscribe button, more content to come. And until next time, peace.